welcome to the latest edition of Fundamentals. This time around, I'm going to look at an actively managed member of our list of 72 favourite funds, namely Bailey Gifford High Yield Bond. The fund's objective is to produce a high level of return by investing in a diversified portfolio that consists primarily of sub-investment grade bonds. These are effectively loans issued by companies, possibly governments or supranational bodies, whose balance sheets are not necessarily in the most pristine condition, and they therefore have to pay a higher coupon or interest rate to compensate investors for the risk of buying their bonds or, in effect, lending to them. The bonds will be rated as sub-investment grade or junk, to use a purgative term, by the big agencies Moody's, Standard & Poor's and Fitch. In terms of their actual rating then, the bonds will be ranked below BAA3 by Moody's and below BBB- by Standard & Poor's and Fitch. The good news is the fund selects the sub-investment grade bonds through a process which is both robust and slightly different to many of its competitors. There's a focus on identifying and investing in undervalued securities, a process implemented by the experienced and stable team which manages the £420 million portfolio. As I sit here, there are around 95 bonds in the fund and it's well diversified. The top 10 names represent only a fifth of the assets under management. Leading portfolio picks include bonds issued by the Dutch financing vehicle ATF, Virgin Media, Phoenix Life, Telecom Italia, the Italian bank Unicredit, and also L Brands, the owner of the Victoria's Secret retail chain. As you'd expect, the average credit quality of the portfolio is, is double B, and the overall credit profile of the fund is shown here. This next graphic shows the maturity profile of the bonds owned by the fund. The effective maturity is around seven years, and effective gyration is around three years. Then we come to the yield on offer. Bailey Gifford High Yield Bond Fund currently offers a yield of around 3.8% to investors, and that comes from the coupons paid by the bonds it owns, where the range of payments is as shown in this graphic. The fund comes with an ongoing charge figure of 0.38%, so you do have to pay for the manager's expertise. And for those who put faith in such things, it's got a four-star Morningstar ranking. As a final point, Bailey Gifford High Yield Bond Fund is eligible for SIPs, ICEs and dealing accounts, and the minimum investment is just one share, and they cost around 135 pence a piece at the moment. So, those are the mechanics. The question to address next is why could investors consider this fund for portfolio inclusion today? And I think there are three perfectly possible reasons for considering this for portfolio inclusion. The first is the 3.8% yield that comes from the coupons paid by the underlying bond holdings. That 3.8% figure beats cash in the bank, it beats the yield available on the benchmark UK 10-year government bond, or GILT, and it also beats the current UK inflation rate of 2.6% on the consumer price index, 3.3% on the retailer price index, at least before fees. We're also talking about the income units on the fund here, so you will receive dividends from the fund on a quarterly basis. Second reason to look at it is portfolio diversification. Lots of investors may be drawn to equities or stock markets in their search for yield, but bonds or fixed income is an option to consider. The third is the track record of the fund. As we can see here, over the past five years, for example, it has provided capital growth to supplement the yield it has provided. However, we must always remember that past performance is unfortunately no guarantee for the future, and the Bailey Gifford High Yield Bond Fund may not therefore be suitable for all investors for two particular reasons. The first is that sub-investment grade, or junk bonds, do not always provide as much diversification from stocks or equities as you might think. <clears throat> because the issuers tend to be highly indebted, and therefore potentially sensitive to the economic or interest rate cycles, the bonds, junk bonds, can trade a lot closer to equities than government or investment grade bonds, especially during times of market stress. The second consideration is that high yield bonds can therefore be volatile in price, and you can see this in the capital performance of this particular fund since its launch in 2002. That's shown by this graphic here. So in sum, the value of the fund could go down as well as up, and there have been some big downdrafts in the past that would have wiped out a big chunk of the value of the dividends received had you sold at or near the bottom. So what this does go to show is that investors must therefore do their research on Bailey Gifford High Yield Bond Fund to make sure that it fits with our overall strategy, target returns, time horizon and appetite for risk before they put any capital to work. In this case, 
you'll need to particularly make sure that the spread or the premium yield you're getting relative to say government bonds or investment grade corporate bonds provides enough compensation for the risks involved. And that's a decision only you can take. But even if you don't think this fund is for you, it may be worth keeping an eye on it. And indeed the high yield bond asset class as a whole. This is because it can sometimes be a bit of a lead indicator for stocks when times are about to get better or tougher. Another way of doing it is keeping an eye on this big US quoted tracker or exchange traded fund, the iShares iBox High Yield ETF, as it does show that it can be a point of the stock market too. So it's certainly looking at this chart that shows the tracker's performance relative to the FTSE All World Stock Index. Though again, I must stress, we all know the past performance offers no guarantee for the future. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.